Joining me now is Democratic Senator Alex Padilla of California. He served as the state's secretary of state for six years. So I'm going to want to talk to him about some of that stuff. Uh, Senator, it is, I've had to practice a few times because it's the first time ha having you on the show as Senator uh, Padilla as opposed to Secretary Padilla. So, so welcome. Um, uh, but you're in a little bit of a dysfunctional place at the moment because it should be pretty low-hanging fruit to get approval to investigate the causes and the threats behind the January 6th interaction. That, that I don't think should be the, the, the most complicated thing that the Senate is actually going to face. And yet that attempt may fail this week. An attempt at a bipartisan commission in which both parties have had input into its creation. Uh, good morning, Ali. Good to be back with you. And uh, look, you're absolutely right. Uh, it was uh, pretty clear after 9-11 uh, that uh, we needed to act and Congress acted on a bipartisan basis to establish a commission to look at what happened, one of the most significant events in our nation's uh, history. Look, after the Great Recession, there was a, a commission established to uh, look into how it happened so we can inform policy try and prevent it from happening again. And the same needs to be done uh, in response to the deadly, not just violent, but deadly insurrection that took place uh, on January 6th. Sadly, what we're hearing is, you know, while Trump is gone, Trumpism clearly is not. And uh, we have a party across the aisle that's choosing to put to unity over honesty. I want to talk to you then in, the, in that context about infrastructure. On one hand, I, I'm quite amazed uh, and pleased to be reporting what I just reported as I, as I uh, introduced you, and that is uh, the White House had a number, the uh, Republican, some Republican senators didn't like that number, the White House changed its number and has said it's up to Republicans uh, to come back with something else. There's something that feels a lot like negotiation going on between the White House and Republican senators on infrastructure. I, am I right or am I being duped? Uh, look, I, I, uh, I definitely know that uh, the White House, uh, starting with President Biden himself and, uh, you know, frankly, Senate Democrats uh, are making genuine good faith efforts to work with our Republican colleagues to uh, try to do this on a bipartisan basis as investment in our infrastructure uh, should be. And by the way, let me just say this. It's, it's not about just addressing some deferred maintenance and moving on. Uh, it is uh, imperative that we invest and restructure our infrastructure to keep us safe, secure, and economically competitive in the decades ahead. That's what's at stake here. And we had the president put forward an initial proposal. Republicans come back with their counter offer that was just a fraction of the investment. Uh, and look, President Biden, to his credit, took a, a, a very modest step in their direction. And their description is that uh, we're getting further apart here. How does that work? That's clearly not a sign of good faith negotiations on their part. There's still some time, should be done on a bipartisan basis, but uh, Democrats will exercise any and all options for getting this done. So evaluate for me then how you think the Biden administration is doing right now, because we know there are some factions within the Democratic Party who are saying, <clears throat> you know, no one will, the, the Republicans won't support these things. They will take credit for any benefit they bring, like the Relief Act. So Democrats should just move forward with what their agenda items are now and get them done in the face of an intransigent uh, Republican Party. How do you evaluate that? Look, I, you know, personally, I agree to have a, a, the nod from the parliamentarians to be able to do this through reconciliation. It's a, a heck of a card to have in your back pocket when you're negotiating. And if the American response plan is any indicator, let's, look, let's make a genuine effort to do this on a bipartisan basis. Uh, but we can't afford to wait too long. If Republicans are willing to, great. If not, we must move forward. That's how we did the ARP. And uh, the choice is there. It's balls in their court, as the president said. Are we going to do infrastructure on a bipartisan basis or not? But we know we need it. Our, our transportation uh, infrastructure needs it. Our electrical grid needs it. Our water infrastructure needs it. Uh, broadband needs it. Uh, our health care system, our housing, uh, our uh, education infrastructure, so many elements of our nation's infrastructure is in dire need of investment. Uh, I wonder if you still have your Secretary of State hat nearby, because I wouldn't mind putting it on uh, for you, putting it on for a second. In, in California, in <laughs> Nazi, Nazi, Obispo, Nazi. Republicans there, 
<laughs> They're calling for an election <laughs> recount. Sounds very much like Maricopa County. And what we're learning is what's going on in Maricopa County in Arizona is going to be repeated in uh, Fulton County in Georgia. It's, it's, it's being exported to Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania. Uh, this is, is a big problem because what these are is effective efforts to undermine faith in voting that Donald Trump already started undermining last year. How do you see this as somebody who had to oversee elections? Yeah, it's, uh, you hit the nail on the head. This is nothing other than an effort to undermine public confidence in our election. Look, we go back to the 2016 cycle uh, and multiple elections in between. When you undermine confidence in elections, it encourages eligible voters to not participate. That is not good for our democracy. Uh, that in and of itself is the definition of voter suppression. People want to audit the results and pay attention. Uh, in California and in most jurisdictions across the country, post-election audits are mandated. They're required, they're transparent, and they're put in place exactly for that reason, to ensure uh, faith and confidence, not just in the electoral process, but in the election results. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, here, here's what's sad, Ali because we've been dealing with this for years and years and years. And there's a direct tie between this and the January 6th commission that we started with. In 2016, clearly documented foreign interference in our elections. And we had a president of the United States that was in denial about that, refused to acknowledge it. Now we have a deadly January 6th insurrection, you know, fueled by white supremacy and the big lie. And we have a whole political party. A whole political party that's in denial about that and wants to, uh, you know, per, uh, put any investigation, uh, any accountability under the rug. Uh, I was talking to the former uh, Arizona Attorney General uh, Grant Woods earlier, and he said, "Look, at this point, this has to fall to the the United States Congress. Uh, Senate's got to get uh, S one through, and, and has got to push voting rights." Uh, no doubt. You know, we have both the, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, which is necessary, but not a substitute for H.R. 1 or S. 1 on, on the Senate side. Yes, there's that big looming question about the F word, the filibuster. Uh, and, you know, maybe the January 6th commission, if it fall, fails to pass on the Senate floor, uh, is this what breaks the filibusters back or not? Uh, you know, there's a long list of agenda items that need to get acted upon and the filibuster continues to obstruct. So it's time to get rid of it. Senator, good to see you. Thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Democratic Senator Alex Padilla of California. We look forward to many more conversations, sir.